Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You are watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday the 24th of August. PM Modi welcomes new members of BRICS, calls for similar modernization at other global forums. Pakistan's president summons election commission head on date for next vote. And US only barrier for international recognition, says Taliban deputy foreign minister. And now for all the details, leaders of the BRICS group on Thursday declared expansion of the grouping and welcomed six new countries to join the diplomatic bloc. Welcoming the inclusion of new members, Prime Minister Narendra Modi said the addition of six countries will help to strengthen BRICS as an organization. He said India is trying to build consensus so that other countries that have desire to join the grouping and work as partner countries. Highlighting the need of reforms in other global institutions and forums, PM Modi said BRICS expansion and modernization is a message for other forums that need to mold themselves according to changing times. BRICS का विस्तार एवं आधुनिकरण इस बात का संदेश है कि विश्व के सभी इंस्टीट्यूशंस को बदलते समय की परिस्थितियों के अनुरूप ढलना चाहिए यह एक ऐसी पहल है जो 20वीं सदी में स्थापित अन्य ग्लोबल इंस्टीट्यूशंस के रिफॉर्म के लिए एक मिसाल बन सकता है well, the space agency ISRO officials on Thursday informed that the moon rover of India's Chandrayaan-3 exited the spacecraft to begin its exploration of the lunar surface. India made history as it landed on the moon's south pole on Wednesday after a 40-day journey, making the country first ever to achieve the feat. Chandrayaan-3 is expected to remain functional for two weeks to run a few experiments, including a spectrometer analysis of the lunar surface's mineral composition. India's success comes less than a week after Russia's Luna 25 mission failed. People across the country expressed joy and applauded the hard work of the scientists. The achievement of India is very important for us. Our scientists have proved in the whole world that we are also capable. So it's a big achievement for a nation like India because still we are not as developed as US public China. So it's indeed a great uh, achievement and the cost, the, what uh, they have achieved in the beer cost, the, in the Hollywood, the people, they make movies in that cost. So we have achieved in that cost entire pro project landing on the moon. And Pakistan's President Arif Alvi on Wednesday summoned the Chief Election Commissioner of Pakistan, Sikandar Sultan Raja, to discuss fixing the date of the next election due in November this year. In a letter shared by the President's office, Alvi reminded the Election Commission head the constitutional mandate of holding elections within 90 days of Parliament dissolution and invited him to hold consultations to fix the appropriate date. Notably, outgoing Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif administration had pushed for elections being held under the latest census, which the main opposition party, PTI, has claimed as a tactic to delay the general elections. Electoral experts have suggested holding the election under the new census can push back the elections for several months, possibly until February. And moving on, former government employees in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir recently staged a demonstration to demand the promised hike in their pensions by the Pakistan government. They accused Islamabad of being apathetic towards their plight. Scores of former government employees and pensioners in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir recently held a protest to demand a raise in their pensions from the Pakistan government. The protesters lamented it has become difficult to manage household expenses amid soaring inflation. But Islamabad has remained apathetic towards their plight. They said they have been holding demonstrations since last year, but no official has come forward to even hear their pleas. <laughs> This 
उधर से अनवर काकर साहब इधर से अनवर आकर साहब सारे तबका इस वक्त सरापा एहतजाज है एक मजदूर से लेकर सेक्रेटरी हुकूमत तक और इवन के वजरा तक भी जो सरापा एहतजाज हैं तो ये बैड गवर्नेंस की खुली सबूत है खुला सबूत है The protesters blamed instead of providing any aid to the people in the backward region economic losses faced by Pakistan due to policy paralysis are also being compensated from territories under its illegal control Well the Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs Sheikh Mohammad Abbas Tanakzai has said that administration considers the US to be the only obstacle for the official recognition of the Islamic Emirate. In an interview to Tolo News, Tanakzai said that if the US reopens its embassy in Afghanistan, other countries will also recognize the Islamic Emirate. He further stressed that NATO nations and the European community are ready to come to Afghanistan if the issues with the US would be resolved soon. Since taking control in 2021, Taliban has enforced some of the worst gender-based discriminatory policies. Despite promising a moderate administration, the regime has imposed its strict interpretation of Islamic law by enforcing harsh rules, banning girls' education, and barring Afghan women from public life and most work. Following this, no country has officially recognized the Taliban's regime in Afghanistan and has asked the administration to withdraw all the rules. An obstructions came to an end in Nepal's parliament on Wednesday after Prime Minister Pushp Kamal Dehel led government agreed to form a commission to probe the repeated cases of gold smuggling in the Himalayan nation. Federal agency CIB which is investigating the recent gold smuggling case will continue their probe while the commission will commence its work on September 22nd local media reported. The commission will have the mandate to recommend legal and structural reforms needed to curb gold smuggling the Himalayan Times quoted Deputy Prime Minister Poonam Bahadur Khadka as saying In the past Nepal has witnessed repeated cases of gold smuggling but have failed to convict the masterminds behind these cases And Sri Lanka kept its key interest rates unchanged at 11% and 12% respectively in a surprise move on Thursday but announced caps on lending rates in some segments to ensure policy loosening done so far filters through to the economy. The bank however said in the statement that interest rates on certain lending products remain excessive and downward adjustment in some sectors was inadequate. The statement further added that such administrative measures would also ensure the swift transmission of previous monetary policy easing measures to all sectors of the economy. Sri Lanka's key inflation index peaked at 70% year on year in September but came down to 6.3% in July after the island nation locked down a 2.9 billion dollar bailout from the IMF. Sri Lanka's economy crumpled last year after its foreign exchange reserves dropped to record lows, leaving the country struggling to pay for essential imports, decimated the currency and sent inflation soaring. Well, that's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.